Okay, so we're going to be talking about a counting technique here called fundamental counting rule. So the reason why we have to work on counting rules in this course is because when we're working with probability, there'll be some problems where we know what we have to find, but trying to figure it out is going to be very difficult because the sheer number of possible outcomes is just daunting. So a good example would be trying to figure out the probability that you would draw a full house when drawing five cards randomly from a deck of cards. You know, the basic probability formula for that would be the number of full houses available divided by the total number of possible five card hands. So just think about the denominator for a second. How many unique five card hands can you draw? Well, there's millions, right? Millions. You couldn't possibly know that number easily, right? It's not just something you think of the top of your head you have. You have to have some special technique to count that. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to figure it out. So we're going to develop these techniques by starting with the most basic one, the fundamental counting. All right, so what does the fundamental counting rule allow us to do? Well, it actually allows us to determine um, the number of possible outcomes for scenarios like this. So we can figure out how many different outfits, for example, this girl can create with these items in her closet. So let's read the problem together. It says a girl has a choice of four tops, three jeans, and two pairs of shoes that all match. How many different outfits can she form? So the way you would use fundamental counting rule to solve this problem is you want to break the problem down into steps. So you want to think about if this girl wants to get dressed in the morning, what steps does she have to go through to do that? Well, relevant to the problem, she's got to pick a top, a pair of jeans, and a pair of shoes. So there's actually three things she has to do. So it's probably helpful if we say, okay, let's draw three spaces to represent the three choices she has to make. So she's got to make three choices. Let's draw three spaces to show that. Okay, so this first space is going to represent the choice of choosing a top, right? This one is going to represent the jeans she has to choose, and then the shoes. And then what you want to do when you're working with the fundamental counting rule is after you've broken it up to a set of steps, you want to think about the number of ways she can complete each step. And you want to put that up here on top. So how many different tops can she choose? Well, she's got four options for the tops. So we're going to put a four there to represent that there are four tops she can choose among. How many different pairs of jeans can she choose? There are three different pairs of jeans, so we'll use three here. How many pairs of shoes? Two pairs of shoes, so we're going to put a two here to represent the number of shoes she can choose among. All right, now once you have that listed out, the last step of the process for fundamental counting rule is to simply multiply. So we're going to multiply these numbers together, and that gives us the total number of possible outcomes. So we'll have four times three is 12, and 12 times two, 24 ends up being your final answer. So there are 24 unique outfits that she can form. All right, so I wanted to kind of show you a simpler example than this one, just so you can believe me that the product is the proper way to finish the problem. Because you may say, well, how did I know I should multiply? Maybe I should have just added them together. So let's just give a simple example to see if it makes sense to you why you multiply. So let's imagine a different scenario where the woman only had um, a choice of three tops to choose from and two jeans. And that's all we're going to worry about. We won't worry about the shoes. Maybe she only has one pair of shoes and she's going to wear a pair of sandals or something, so she doesn't have a choice for that. So three tops, two pairs of jeans. Now, if we call the tops, tops A, B, and C, and the jeans pair one and two, then we can easily figure out the different possible number of outcomes here. We could actually list them. So let's say if we started, let's say she chose top A. Well, with top A, she could either choose pair of jeans one or pair of jeans two. And that would form the outfits either a1 or outfit A2. Well, there's two outfits she could get from that pairing, right? Pairing A of a pair of jeans one or a pair of jeans two. She could have also chosen top B and done the same thing, either picked a pair of jeans one or a pair of jeans two. That gives you B1, B2. And you can guess the same thing for C, right? If she had chose top C, she could also pair it up with jeans pair one or jeans pair two. That's going to give you C1, C2. So those are all the outfits she can form because we've exhausted all the possibilities for the tops. And you see that the number of outfits turns out to be what? Exactly six outfits, which would have been the same as the product of three times two. And so this is an illustration of why this works. It's not a proof of why this theorem is true, but it's just an example that might help you believe that it is true. So fundamental counting rule. You break it up into a set of steps. You figure out the number of possible ways to complete each step. And then you multiply those numbers together to get the final answer. 
It allows you to count up the total number of ways something 